In this example, we see how to find the coordinates of the points of intersection between a parabola and a straight line graph. And to do that, we're going to be working through the example we have here, in which we're simply told find the coordinates of the points of intersection of y, which equals to x squared plus 5x minus 13, and y equals to 2x minus 3, which is the line. Now, as you can see, I've already plotted the parabola as well as the line on the right hand side of the screen. And we can see right away that they intersect in two points. And so if we were allowed to use our graphical calculators, then we'd be able to find the answer to this question simply by finding the x and y coordinates of both of these points of intersection with our calculator. But here we learn how to do that algebraically or simply by hand. So let's go ahead. I'll start by writing SOL here for solution. And now we can get started. Copying the two equations we have, so those are y equals to x squared plus 5x minus 13 and y equals to 2x minus 3. To find the points of intersection, the method we'll use here is often called equating the y's. And here's how that works. We're going to equate the expression for y in the parabola, so that's x squared plus 5x minus 13 to the expression for y of our straight line, so that's 2x minus 3. And in fact, we could think of this as a step 1 here, so I'll write a little step 1. We're going to equate, in other words, set equal, x squared plus 5x minus 13 and 2x minus 3. So let's go ahead and write that. We're going to write x squared plus 5x minus 13 equals to 2x minus 3. And now that that's done, we can see that we have an equation which only contains x. And so we can solve this. To do that, the first thing we'll do is gather all the terms we have on one side of the equation. And so I'll gather everything on the left hand side. And so for that, I need to get rid of this 2x minus 3 on the right hand side. And I'll do that in two steps. I'll start by getting rid of this 3 that's being subtracted from the right hand side, which I do by adding 3 to both sides of this equation so that we end up with x squared plus 5x minus 13 plus 3, which is minus 10, and that will equal to 2x minus 3 plus 3. So that just leaves us with 2x. I carry on and I now get rid of this 2x on the right hand side, which I do by subtracting 2x, and I do so from both sides of the equation. So I now have x squared plus 5x minus 2x, so that's plus 3x minus 10, which equals to 2x minus 2x, which is 0. And as such, that's the first step done. We equated the two expressions we had for y and rearranged it all until we had this equation. And so we can move on to step 2. And in step 2, well, we need to solve this equation. And in fact, I'll quickly copy that equation. That's x squared plus 3x minus 10 equals to 0. Now, looking at this, you've no doubt noticed that we're dealing with a quadratic equation. And so to solve it, we could either use the quadratic formula or we could attempt to solve it by factoring. And I'll go ahead and do that. Since the leading coefficient, that is the number multiplying the x squared is 1, to factor this quadratic, we're looking for two numbers, say p and q, such that their sum, p plus q, is equal to the middle coefficient, so that's 3, and their product, p times q, equals to the constant term we have here, which is negative 10. And either you can see what p and q have to be right away, but if not, I would suggest focusing on the pairs of factors of 10. So let's see, 1 and 10 is a pair of factors, Indeed, 1 times 10 and 10 times 1 both equal to 10, and the other pair would be 2 and 5, since 2 times 5 equals to 5 times 2, which equals to 10. But now, since the product has to be equal to negative 10, one of the two factors we have must be negative. So we could have negative 1 times 10, or 10 times negative 1, which would both lead to negative 10, but in either of those two cases, negative 1 and 10, or negative 10 and 1, we'll never get 3 by adding them together. On the other hand, if we focus on these two factors, 2 and 5, if we had negative 2 times 5, then we'd indeed get negative 10, and negative 2 plus 5 would give us 3. 
So those are the two values we're after. And in fact, we could say that P equals to negative two and Q equals to five. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box those. There we go. And so now that we've found these two numbers, we can go ahead and factor this quadratic. Indeed, this quadratic will now be written as, in parentheses, x plus 5 times x minus 2 equals to 0. Where, to be clear, I'm getting this plus 5 here from the 5 I see here, and the minus 2 we see here from the negative 2 we have here. And I should say I could have written x minus 2 times x plus 5, it would make no difference whatsoever. Okay, now that this is written in its factored form, we can solve the equation. Indeed, we have two pairs of parentheses that are being multiplied, and the product, or the result, is equal to 0. And that tells us that either x plus 5 equals to 0, or that x minus 2 equals to 0. So two possibilities. Now, if x plus 5 equals to 0, and in fact I'll write that, if x plus 5 equals to 0, then that would mean that x equals to negative 5. On the other hand, if x minus 2 equals to 0, and I'll go ahead and write that as well, if x minus 2 equals to 0, then that would mean that x equals to 2. And these two values of x are the solutions to this quadratic equation. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box those in red. There we go. Now, what we've just found are the x-coordinates of the points of intersection of the parabola and the line. And in fact, looking at the graph that I plotted earlier on, you may be able to see that the x-coordinate of this point of intersection is negative 5, which is what we have here, and the x-coordinate of the second point of intersection, well, that's 2, which is what we have here. So, things are looking good, but we don't stop there. At this stage, we finish step 2, in which we found the x-coordinates of the points of intersection. And so we can move on to the third and final step, step 3, in which we need to find the y-coordinates of these points of intersection. And for that, we can use either one of the two equations that was given to us in the question. That is, we could calculate the y-coordinates using either the equation of the parabola, or we could calculate the y-coordinates using the equation of the straight line. And looking at the two options we have here, well, I would definitely suggest using the equation of the line to calculate the y-coordinates. And here's how that works. We need to do it twice, once for each of the x-coordinates we've found. And so I'll start with x equals to negative 5, and I'll underline that. When x equals to negative 5, using this line equation, we could go ahead and state that y will equal to 2 times, in parentheses, negative 5, minus 3. Now that's equal to 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10, minus 3. And since negative 10 minus 3 is equal to negative 13, we can state that when x equals to negative 5, y is equal to negative 13. And that's the y-coordinate. At the point of intersection whose x-coordinate is negative 5, the y-coordinate is negative 13. And so that's this point of intersection right here, and we can go ahead and check, but the y-coordinate is indeed negative 13. And so we could label that on the graph, that point of intersection has coordinates negative 5, negative 13. Done. Next, we need to find the y-coordinate of the point of intersection whose x-coordinate is 2. And so I'll go ahead and write when x equals to 2, and again, I'll use the line equation to find the y-coordinate, and I'll say that y is equal to 2 times 2 minus 3, so that becomes 2 times 2, which is 4 minus 3, and finally, since 4 minus 3 equals to 1, y equals to 1. And that's the y-coordinate of the second point of intersection. And again, looking at our graph over here, we can see that this point of intersection has a y-coordinate of 1. And so we can label that one as well. This point of intersection has coordinates 2, 1. And we're done. To make things clear for the examiner, I would go ahead and state the final answer as x equals to negative 5 and y equals to negative 13, which we could even present as the coordinates of a point, so that's negative 5 and negative 13. That's one point of intersection. And the second point of intersection, well, its x-coordinate was 2 and its y-coordinate was 1, so we could go ahead and state that x equals to 2 and y equals to 1, which leads to the point 2, 1. 
And that's the second point of intersection. And there we have it. We finished this example in which we found the points of intersection of a parabola and a line. Remember, the three steps were, step one, we equated the y's, meaning we equated the expression we had for y in the parabola and the expression we had for y in the straight line equation. And still in step one, we rearranged that expression to form a solvable quadratic equation. Once that was done, we moved on to step two in which we solved the quadratic equation and the solutions we obtained corresponded to the x-coordinates of the points of intersection of the parabola and the line. Finally, in step three, we used the line equation alongside the x-coordinates we found in step two to find the y-coordinates of the points of intersection. And there we have it. That's it for this tutorial.